What's up with it, man? It's your boy Corey Mo off in this thing, UGK alumni. Right now, you putting it down with Hip Hop Wired. You know what it is. Chetch. HipHopWired.com. Chilling with super producer Corey Mo. What's happening? What's happening? First of all, man, you kind of th throwing people for a shock. When I say that, is a lot of people know you for being a producer. A lot of people didn't know you actually spit, unless those who truly follow your career. Can you talk yeah. to us a little bit about that and how you came to do both? Uh, <clears throat> it's 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 kind of it's kind of weird, man, because I actually started off rapping back in um, I don't know, man. It was early '90s, I guess, because my brother used to rap as well. My older brother Mike, he used to rap in a rap group, so you know me being right next door to him in the next room and me just being you know young and wanting to be like my big brother i wanted to rap too you know what i mean that was way back when beastie boys and ll cool j and big daddy kane and everybody was popping so what i do i would go in and just steal all of his albums and records and you know i'm listening to nwa and everything i'm not supposed to be hearing ghetto boys ugk you know so it kind of just uh, it kind of just grew on me, so I, I started rapping, started writing. So throughout the whole '90s, it was more like uh, my brother was in college in uh, Beaumont. I was in you know junior high and high school in Houston, and I'm rapping at all of the pepper rallies and talent shows, and just getting real known around town. Ended up bumping in the Big Mike and Scarface and a lot of them cats, and you know. Um, I went on tour with Big Mike back in 97, what a lot of people don't know. We actually came to Atlanta for the Freak Neek, you know what I mean? So I was his hype man, and uh, my boy Trizze, we, we we had a group, Scarface wanted to sign us to uh, Interface back in, I guess, what was that, 90, I don't know, man, 96, 97, 98, up and now. Anyway, <clears throat> long story short. I ended up going to school for digital audio technology, and I took a whole bunch of courses, uh, me and my brother both. Um, so, you know, we took all of the digital audio courses and all of that kind of stuff, and we ended up buying equipment piece by piece so that we can, you know, do our own little studio thing. You know, we, we didn't know that it would be as big as it is, but, you know, once we bought the beat machine, it just led to the keyboard, it led to the computer, it led to the mixing board, it led to sound booth. And so, you know, we ended up doing that, opened the studio uh, up in Acres Home, opened another studio up 10 years later in Atlanta. Now we about to open another one up in um, L.A. real soon. So, you know, we just trying to get it, man. But to answer your question... Before the 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 long the long short story, um, I actually I actually been rapping. Put it like this: people in Texas, Texas and Louisiana know me more from rapping because I rapped on all the Pimp C's albums. I rapped on Devin the Dude albums. I rapped on. I got over six, seven mixtapes out throughout Houston and Louisiana. But outside of that, people know me more as production. And, you know, they get that from the records that I produced on UGK, Ghetto Boys, um, stuff I did with Talib Kweli and Banner and, you know, cats like that. So people outside of that know me more as a producer. So what I did was I dropped a mixtape with all of my production credits on it so that people can get familiar with that. And then I backdoored and just dropped this one. It's been about time hosted by bun and i'm rapping on every single track and i produced half the record so you know just to give people like yeah man i i, I do more than rap and i do more than produce you know what i mean so you know i guess i guess that'll kind of sort of answer your question man so basically i'm trying to get it however i can get it man whether it's rapping whether it's producing whether it's mixing whether it's running a studio however as long as it pay the bills i'm gonna get to it so talk, let's talk a little bit about that mixtape, man. Um, break it down. What can we expect? Like it's almost like an introduction in some sort to people outside of Louisiana and Texas. Right. So when, when they cop that or download it, like what can they expect to hear? Um, it's actually what I've been doing, but people are so new to it because they haven't seen me on the scene. I haven't dropped a mixtape since '08. Since uh, you know, since since Pimp Pass, I haven't really dropped shit. But um. 
you can expect all of that good gangster southern funk, man. You know what I mean? That that real homegrown Houston funk. And then I still reached out to my boy Static Selector out there in Boston. He gave me a couple of them. Um, you know, I got a couple from some Houston producers. I produced some of it on that. So, you know, it's definitely a variety. I don't try not, I, I try not to leave anybody out as far as East or West Coast because I grew up on everything. You know what I mean? But you can definitely expect some real good quality music, man. Real quality. Okay, I know you just mentioned Pimp C a second ago. Mm. I know before his untimely passing, he had just like got a new publishing deal, a new situation, the label deal was about to pop off. Were you going to be a part of that? Yeah, I was, man. I was probably going to be the first act off of that label. Um, I actually spoke to Pimp right before he passed when he was in L.A., he actually tried to get me and my brother to come to L.A. that same weekend, but we couldn't make it because it was such short notice. And uh, he was out there, you know, shopping, shopping deals and getting everything together, man. And um, I was I was definitely on the roster to, to uh, drop my record. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, everything happened for a reason. So, you know, it's definitely it's definitely about to go down in a hot second. I guess we can say you would help sort of groom about your Pimp C and your GK, man. How yeah. did that relationship come about? Um, well, it, it was actually my brother was in college, like I said a second ago, in Beaumont. And, of course, 10 minutes up the street is Port Arthur. You know what I mean? So... Um, he was real popular on campus. You know, he ran track and all of that. And... um ended up kicking it with with bun and pimp a lot and he ended up buying pimp c's cadillac so they they kind of got close after that you know what i mean and um whenever i would come down to visit my brother in college you know what i'm saying i go by a pimp crib and you know i'm like what's up man what's happening yeah it's going down whatever whatever so finally when pimp come to houston and came to the studio for the first time we ended up doing a song and ever since then he just took me under his wing and was like you know what i'm saying them drums need to sound like this or do it like this or you know what i mean so he definitely schooled me on a whole lot of stuff more than just more than just music production and rapping man just schooled me on life in general on how to handle certain situations and talk to people you know what i mean and and he instilled in my mind to just remain independent you know what I mean? Him and him and him and Bun both did that. Okay. I know um, you mentioned working with Talib Kweli before. Like, how did you branch out to start working with other artists outside, quote unquote, the Southern area? And did that relationship come about from the country cousins, or did y'all already know Talib? Um, how did I meet Kweli? You know what? When uh, uh I think Kweli came to town, came to Houston, um, in he needed some studio time. So, you know, he called Bun. Like, yo, Bun, I need a good studio to record that out here. And Bun was like, shit, you need to go to Corey Mo. So I get a call from Kwali. He come through and book like an eight-hour session. And it's just me and him. Nobody else for like eight, nine hours. So it's like we developed a real cool relationship after that, man. So we always kept in touch. You know what I'm saying? I slide him tracks. He slide me verses. We just, you know, continue to uh, keep the relationship open, man, and just do real good business. Um, Kwali's a real good dude. He taught me a whole lot uh, as well, too. Um, you know, as far as as far as everybody else, really, it's just me on the block grinding, giving them beat CDs and staying on that Internet and staying in people's face. You know what I mean? Yeah, what's up with it, man? You looking to get in contact with me? You can follow me on Twitter at Corey Mo Music. You can go to the website, Corey Mo Music dot com. Um, you already know what it is. H-Town, Texas, UGK alumni. Long live the pimp. We out of here. Chatch. What's up with it, man? It's your boy Corey Moe off in this thing, UGK alumni. Right now, you putting it down with Hip Hop Wired. You know what it is. Chetch.